Elden Ring, a game held in high praise by many, including Post Malone and Elon Musk, as well as winning Game of the Year in 2021, well, you'd expect the game to be uh, pretty good. So I'm going to be giving my review of the game based off of uh, my first playthrough of the game, which means I have not experienced everything uh, there is to offer, but this is based off of my first impressions of the game and what I think of it so far. Now, I will be playing it more and making a different review in the future once I experience more of it. I just want to make this to kind of put my thoughts out there and, you know, see if my thoughts change in the future when I play the game more and experience all the endings. Anyways, let's get started. So the first thing I do when I look into a game is, of course, look at the performance. Because that is probably the most important detail. If a game doesn't perform, well, guess what? You can't play it. And in the modern day... In most games don't perform well, which means they could have lots of bugs or even worse have frame rate issues or crash in general. And uh, I'm glad to say that this game does not have that issue at all, at least for me. And I don't have the best graphics card in the world. I don't have like a great PC compared to what it could be now. I never really ran into any stuttering issues. I never really uh I never really crashed. I did crash one time. Loading um, between things, like when you're like loading screens, didn't really take that long. And I mean, there was no bugs that I'm aware of, and are any bugs as I think that are major. Um, and of course, with along with that is of course the visuals. Uh, the visuals, uh, just the graphics in general, were pretty good. I mean. Could it be the better? Yeah, but the famous saying is, is graphics doesn't make a game good. It's the gameplay. Which means if the graphics are not the top of the line, I mean, it's fine. I'm actually glad it's not because my PC wouldn't be able to run this game. But, you know, it's still pretty impressive. Like, they're not bad and, and by any stretch of the imagination. But it definitely could be better. Alright, but anyways, that was all the, you know the fluff, you know, like, okay, yeah, it's important, but not the most important. What's really important is the first thing, the map. The map is important because without a good map, well, guess what? A lot of the game is going to be bad because your way between bosses and just doing things is through exploring the map and, you know, walking around it. Some people might say the map is a little too big, um, and I'd say those people say that are being ridiculous. I think the map is a pretty good size, with um, not much left to be desired. I mean, you basically have every aspect of like different volumes uh, covered. You got volcano, you got snow, you got this like war torn area, you got you know normal forest, you got everything, right? And there's a large variety, which is nice. And also, they did do a good job of dividing the area into sections. For example, the beginner area is very clearly divided by a gigantic castle into the more advanced area. And then that's divided by another like gate into the next harder area. And each area is like well divided, and it feels natural. The enemies slowly get harder as you move farther up north, and I guess out east as well. My major complaint with the map is that some areas feel like they're just dragged out or the areas in like important areas are spaced way too far apart. Uh, in particular, I'm talking about Khalid, I think that's how you pronounce it, the f farthest east area of the map. Um, there's a lot of just empty space and along paths. There's also this huge like area that you can go down in. That, like there's only one path that leads into it, and it's a huge open area that's like kind of like a swamp that has nothing there, and it just feels like a waste of space. Like why go there? I mean, everything else is pretty lively, and I feel like things are spaced out pretty well apart. And sometimes, yes, it can be annoying to travel um, to locations because maybe. Sometimes it could be annoying to travel because it might take a little longer than you want to take. But, I mean, you have a horse in most scenarios, so you're fine. There was really not many scenarios where I felt like, oh wow, my horse is not fast enough. Another important aspect of the map is also the, you know, the NPCs, I feel like. So, 
I already talked about the enemies, how I feel like they're, you know, they progress pretty well, you know, as in difficulty wise, but the NPCs you meet uh, throughout the map, they're kind of lacking. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what I was expecting, but because this game kind of played like Skyrim in a lot of ways, I was expecting there to be a lot more, you know, interesting dialogue when you do meet NPCs who are friendly, but instead, a lot of them feel stale. Um, and also, I have to mention this. Almost none. N there's very few characters who have their animation for their mouth synced up to what they're saying, and it bothers me. There is like almost every single character is not synced up. How do you have a game this massive? Um, that's clearly you've spent hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, you know, tens of millions maybe, and you can't even like animate the stupid mouth of any character properly. It just pisses me off. It's like. Dude, it, how does no one care? Like, it seems like no one seems to realize this. Maybe my game was broken, I don't know. But it's just annoying, right? But anyways, um, you know, it would be nice to have a little bit more of lively characters. A lot of them, it's just, you stand there, and you talk to them. They talk to you, and it's like, okay. Also, the issue I have is they speak in poetry, which I just find really annoying. Because it makes the game a lot more hard to understand because they're using stupid words that you haven't seen uh, since I was alive ever. Like, before most people were alive, you know? So it's like, okay, you, you gotta stop. You, you make it normal, please. And I get that it's supposed to represent the times, but, like, it's just annoying. It makes it way more complicated to understand what they're saying, what's going on. I mean, I never understood the lore because all the important NPCs spoke in such weird words. Also... I do think that the dialogue is designed kind of poorly in the sense that, like, they just jump in and start talking in the beginning of the game. They start talking about stuff, and you're just sitting there going, what is any of this? Like, I don't know. And like I said, the quests are pretty boring. The only quest I really did, the quest line, was um, this quest line for the volcano place, and it was quite literally bad. It's like a fetch quest. It's like, oh, go do my dirty work. And then you come back and they say, oh, good. And, and then they ask you to do it again. Another quest. And you sit in there going, why am I doing this, right? And then when you finish, they tell you to go kill this, like, lord. And then after that, they're like, oh, oh, cool. And that's it. You don't, like, what? What was that? Just felt so bland, you know? Like, they didn't really express that much emotion or anything. I don't know. So another important aspect of most games that actually is pretty huge is, of course, progression. If you don't have good progression, as in, like, a way to tell that you're progressing and becoming stronger, well, guess what? You're not going to enjoy the game, because you know, without progression, you have no way to track um, how good you've become. And this applies to almost any game, especially a game like this. Another important part of this game, or any game in fact, is progression. The way you see yourself become stronger, and just the way you see yourself, you know, level up and become better. And the progression in this game is pretty solid, with uh, there's multiple ways to improve your character, and to progress, and that's through leveling up your weapons, um, getting better weapons, or just leveling up your stats. Which I think is really nice, giving you multiple ways to progress, because it means that, you know, you don't have to be stuck in one way. For example, you might want to, uh, you know, get better armor and, you know, upgrade your health stat if you feel like you're dying too fast, but if you feel like you're not doing enough damage, you might want to upgrade your damage stats such as dexterity and strength, and maybe even upgrade your weapon. And, you know, upgrading your gear, I mean, upgrading your gear in general or your stats, makes a notable small difference. Okay, so that's what's really satisfying about it. Also, getting ruins can be grindy later in the game, well, actually throughout the game in general, and I do feel like sometimes it could be hard to figure out where to grind ruins, but once you figure out a good spot to grind ruins, I feel like it's satisfying because you put in the work and you see the reward. Also, you will notice yourself get better and you know, damage as time progresses because if you go back to the beginning area in the midpoint of the game you probably can one shot or almost one shot enemies that you could basically only like four or five shot which is pretty nice and eventually you'll get to a point in I feel like in the mid game where you can basically 
one shot most of the weaker enemies and it feels great and by the end game you can one shot a lot of the medium hp enemies or do high damage to them and you know it's just like you can easily track your how strong you're becoming and you know it's pretty satisfying to level up and because there's so many options it allows for a lot of varieties and different ways to see your progress not just through damage which is always nice. I will admit at the end game I do feel like the ruin count for leveling up gets a little ridiculous and you know it's a little bit unrealistic but yeah whatever. Okay so then the next part the bosses. Yeah I have a bone to pick with the bosses. I think the bosses could have been good but they're held back by the combat. See I'm gonna have to make a comparison to Sekiro and what I'm going to say might be ruffle some feathers, but Sekiro has significantly better bosses. In fact, there is no boss that comes close to being anywhere near some of the worst bosses of Sekiro. And the reason why is because, one, and that comes to the combat, like I say. So the problem with the combat is, you know, you're in a time where sword to sword combat is how you fight. And besides, you know, the magic bosses, which are different. Um, and the sword to sword bosses, it uh, feels like it's not a sword to sword fight, and rather just a a dance fight, if that makes sense. Um, instead of you know cl clashing swords, most of the times you're just dodging their attacks and then find an opening, hit, and then continue dodging. The problem with this is this does not feel satisfying. Now, when you look at Sekiro, when you fight bosses, you always fight bosses where you're with in sword scenarios of course that you're actually going sword to sword they're clashing right and so it feels a lot more satisfying because you actually feel like you're in a real sword fight where this just feels like I'm you're dancing like oh I gotta perfectly time my dance move which is basically the dodge and I should be fine which is not inherently bad it just makes the boss fights a lot less memorable because you don't feel like you're actually fighting it it just feels like you're finding openings. That's it. That's all it is. Another problem with the bosses, especially in the mid-game, I've noticed, is that you're way too strong. It feels like almost all the mid-game bosses I did not struggle with remotely. And this caused an issue, which I'll talk about in a second. But the issue with this, um, you know, is that the bosses felt no, not challenging. I feel like the point of a boss, especially in a From Software game, is to feel challenging, but a lot of them were pretty chill or easy, and I beat them in less than like 10 minutes. And that's sad, because in Sekiro, for example, almost every boss took me at least an hour. And here, it's not the case. I will say the beginning bosses are, were very challenging for me, um, but, you know, that's just because I was new to the game. But the end, well the interesting thing about it is that the end is where things get interesting because Melania comes along. Or Melania, I don't know how to pronounce it, right? I probably may pronounce it at the same time twice, I don't know. Basically this boss is where things go south. It's where the marking is near the end of the game. And it's interesting because she's the hardest boss in the game, but no other boss prepares for you. There's no other boss that prepares you for what you're going to get to with Melania, and it's a huge issue. Because all these bosses are pretty easy, and then suddenly you get Melania who just whoops your ass. And you're sitting there thinking, what in the world happened? For me, it actually bothered me, because when I was playing the game, it felt like I went from, you know, hitting 50 mile per hour pitch baseballs to 100 mile per hour. And it's like, I can't adjust to this. I'm not understanding this at all. It's too fast. Everything felt a lot more strong, and it felt a lot more different. And, of course, you have the special attack. This is the only boss that's memorable. But, to be honest, I didn't think it was that fun. That's the thing. Like, yeah, some of the attacks are fun to dodge, but it still wasn't sword-to-sword -sword combat. It was still just a dodge fest. Uh, and also I should mention another problem with the bosses is that, uh, summons. I, I just, I mean, I know people are going to say, oh, don't use summons. Well, they're part of the game. And the problem with summons, especially the mimic tier, is that, uh, 
I mean, it doesn't even matter what summon. I mean, most summons, they are a good way to ch get chip damage in and basically distract the boss and allow you to get free hits. And this meant that any time I got to the harder part of a boss fight, I would just pull out my summon and I would win. Especially with the Mimic tier because it does the same damage as you, has a crap ton of health, and, you know, it's just all around good. And so it made bosses like Melania a joke, because in Melania's second phase, where it's supposed to be harder, I just pulled out my Mimic tier and was able to kill the boss without really having to worry about dodging. And that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous, that's a feature. Okay, it doesn't even matter how you play. Like, literally, it, no matter how you play, if you pull out a summon, you're winning. It's just how it is. Obviously, there's some skill to it, but that is a huge issue. A game like this, but... You know, I just feel like the bosses are not challenging enough. The final boss, I beat him in like 30 minutes. And the final boss of Sekiro, it took me, oh, uh, 123 attempts, whereas I feel like the final boss of this game, I think, took me less than 20 attempts. Yeah. And the reason why I'm comparing Sekiro to this is because Sekiro, you know, boss fights are very memorable, and it's made by the same developers. Well, I have to assume so. The same company. So, it feels like, you know, when this game came after Sekiro, it feels like a step down. I'm not saying that the combat in this game is holding down the bosses fully, because I do enjoy the ability to dodge. I think it's cool, but I would rather have sword-to-sword -sword combat with the dodging, where you actually, your swords clink together. But that never happens. I probably missed a couple things here and there, or major major points that I wanted to talk about, but that is basically everything I want to talk about. I know this is going to seem like a lot of rambling, but I do like the game. It was very enjoyable to play. It has a very good progression system, and, you know, yeah, the bosses are not exactly strong, but they're not horrible to fight. There's none of them are like, oh, this is horrible. It's just like, it's not as enjoyable as it could be, is what my point is, you know, and so... It's not like I hate this game by any means. I do plan on playing every ending. I only picked one ending, and that was the Chaos ending. And I want to play every single ending, and I will be live streaming it, of course, um, on my channel in the foreseeable future until I beat all the endings. Um, at the end of the day, I just feel like there could be some more improvements. But overall, I'm excited for the DLC that's going to be coming this summer, and I have to say this game is pretty solid, and I would recommend playing it. It just could be slightly better. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed. And uh, with that, I am gone. Peace.